In this video, I'll be showing a workflow for taking models in FreeCAD and adding in finger joints so that you can laser cut. So at the start of this workflow, instead of using something like the uh, parts primitives or the laser cut interlocking workbenches uh, box generator, I like to keep uh, inside the part design workbench because that allows me to use a sketcher and do that parametric modeling. So I'll go ahead and create a sketch and uh, for this video, we're going to make a real simple L bracket. So I'll just go ahead and make that. And it's going to be two by two. We can use Shift D to add in those dimensions. It turns green, so we're good to go. And we can pad it. We're going to be using quarter inch birch plywood. And we've made our part. To keep things nice and tidy, I do like to uh, collapse that down and rename it using F2. And to add another part, I'm just going to go ahead, click off there so it's no longer the active body, make a new body, new sketch, pick the sketch plane, and then go ahead and draw that bottom piece. And that's going to be uh, another rectangle, just like the last one, uh, same dimensions. Shift D to add those in, turns green, and we can go ahead and uh, pad that one as well. One thing to note here is that the LC interlocking module does need these two bodies to be flush in order to generate the finger joints. Uh, if you do something uh, like this, it might look good, but it won't generate the finger joints. So got to make sure it's going the right way for the module. And this one too, I like to collapse it down and rename. And there I've done with my model. And I'm keeping this all in a file called whatever underscore pre-cut because the LC interlockings uh, method of adding finger joints is a bit of a one-way operation. Once you add it in, you can't go back and click inside and edit these sketches. So I like keeping this all in one file. That's the one I'll actually update. And then every time I have a bundle of updates and want to cut something on the laser cutter, it's kind of a process I have to do each time of going into save as and making this, this cut file, which is going to be the same thing, but with the finger joints. So it might be tempting to jump in and jump right in and say, add those parts and then try to add your face. Unfortunately, that won't work because it says your face isn't configured. Uh, so to get around that, what I like to do, let's clear out this multi-join we just made. I like to go here and go to the part workbench and do part create simple copy and then hide those old ones and take these new simple copies and load those into the LC interlocking workbench. Uh, once we do that, we can see we can actually add the face. Down here you can find things like uh, how many tabs, uh, we can define the width, uh, the units here are in millimeters, and we can also add in a, a tolerance. I like to put this at a thousandth of an inch for the, the slot tolerance that uh, makes things uh, close to press uh, but comes together without needing too much work with the rubber mallet. Uh, so we go ahead, it generates new parts and puts them inside this multi-join, and we can see that it created uh, those finger tabs uh, for us. Once we're at the point where we're good to go and we want to put it in DXF, we can go to export. And one thing to be careful of here is it generates a shape, it also generates the shape 2D view. And I like to just delete those shape 2D views. I don't really have a use for them. And if you select all four and export to DXF, you'll end up with uh, a shape on top of the same shape. And that might cause your laser cutter to go over the same path twice and double your cutting time. So from here, you can just go uh, file export uh, to save your thing into a DXF and load it into uh, whatever your laser cutter's uh, software is that takes that sort of file in. So that's the workflow I use, sticking with the, the part design workbench, uh, doing everything inside of uh, new bodies, new sketches that I then pad out, and then saving that all at once into a copy, uh, making that simple copy using the part toolbar, and then loading it into the module. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any uh, other ideas or questions, be sure to leave those in the comments section below.